Hey DIYers, I'm George from AlarmGrid. Today I'm going to be going over how alarm systems work. So alarm systems work by sending out a signal to a monitoring station or to the interactive platform, depending what plan you get, whenever a sensor or a zone is faulted. The sensor then reports to the authorities and then the dispatch of the police department, fire department, whatever proper authorities needs to be dispatched gets sent out depending on what kind of monitoring you have. And you also just need to make sure that the alarm system you're using has a way to send out those signals. Most alarm systems nowadays use either POTS, but we're slowly now moving over to internet and cellular systems only. So for instance, the alarm system has central hubs. Central hubs is the main part of the alarm system. So what you're gonna see, all of these here are wireless systems. These are all the central hubs. And then the one of the older style systems is one of the wired systems that has the keypads out in the field by the front door, back door, but the main hub is usually in the beige metal cabinet, which is like this Vista panel that we have over here. This is the general or the typical wired system, all the wires going into it. You can have wireless devices, you just need a wireless receiver. So what is the purpose of an alarm system? The purpose of the system is to notify you or the authorities whenever an alarm goes off. Now there's different sensors for different applications. These systems can send out different signals. So the systems can send out bird signals, which will dispatch the police department if you're being monitored. You can also have the fire department dispatch if you're being monitored and the medical or the medical department, the ambulance dispatch whenever you guys have a medical pendant or anything like that. Now there's different kinds of sensors that will notify or dis depending on what the response type is that you set it to, will notify the authorities or yourself on the type of alarm that's going off. So for instance, for Berg's, for Berg uh, signals, we usually have door windows, motion sensors, um, glass break sensors, and uh, panic buttons. For fire department, we have smokes, CO detectors, you also have a fire panic, and for medical, you also have medical pendants. You have a medical panic on the system, more than likely. Um, there is also key fobs. The key fobs can be set to set different panics and, um, and arm and disarm the system. Now, the different sensors that you can add to these systems, it, they can be wired or wireless, depending on, first of all, if they're wired, you need to make sure you have either a wired system or your wireless system has some wire terminals built in. And if you're gonna do wireless sensors, you just need to make sure that your system has a wireless receiver. Now for the wired systems, you need to add that as a separate part. For the wireless systems, they usually have the receivers already built in. A lot of these are the wireless ones, and then the wired one was the Vista panel that I pointed to earlier. Now, what happens when a sensor is faulted or triggered, right? So whenever a sensor is faulted, opened, um, for instance, if you guys open up a door or a window, the first thing that the sensor does is it sends out a signal. The system acts as the receiver and it receives that signal and then depending on what you have it programmed as, it can either set off an alarm, it can start a delay period, um, it can set off the alarm right away. So, um, so what I mean by setting off the alarm right away and doing a delay period is that if you guys are entering in through the front door and you guys have a sensor there, you obviously don't want the alarm to go off, especially if that's the door you guys use to enter the house every single time, because then the alarm is going to go off every single time. You can program sensors to have a delay period, so it gives you a certain time to get to the alarm system to disarm it. You can also set some sensors to set off an alarm immediately. So for instance, if you have a window on the second floor, nobody should be opening that window up while the system is armed, so you guys can automatically set it to set the alarm off. Another thing you guys can do, for instance, if you guys have any panic buttons or anything like that, those can be programmed to set the alarm off right away. So there's different kinds of programmings that you guys can do on the sensors, depending on what you have it programmed as, is gonna basically tell the system whether it should report out to the central station right away, or if it should hold on to the signal for a couple of seconds before notifying the, cent the central station, or you, if you have the interactive service through the app. So now what happens when an alarm occurs on a system? Well, the first thing that the system does, if you're monitored by a central station, is it's gonna send the signal directly to the central station monitoring center, to the dispatch center, and a proper well-trained dispatcher should receive that signal 
within I'd say about 15 to 20 seconds that's you know giving them enough time to read the signal let them know what's going on what sensor it is that's going off um, going down the call list getting everything ready they'll go ahead and start calling you and they'll let you know hey your front door alarm seems to be going off are you home you then need to provide the dispatcher with the proper false alarm password if it is a false alarm if it's not a false alarm obviously you probably want to have them send the dis you probably want to have them send the police department over to your house to make sure what's going on now if you're being self-monitored what happens if an alarm occurs well if you're doing self-monitoring meaning you only have an interactive app well the app can be set to send you email or text message alerts these email and text message alerts depending on how many you have set up can go to multiple people can go to one person depends on what you guys set it as but most of these systems in order to have an inter interactive app do need to have an internet or a cellular communicator now this goes for both the self-monitoring and the central station monitoring more, more nowadays more often what you'll see is that these alarm systems are using cellular and internet communicators which means that is what they're using to communicate to the central station or to the app they're using a cellular path or an internet path all right if you guys are doing the interactive app phone line will not work with that phone line only works for tra traditional style central station monitoring and um we also cover that but nowadays we're pretty much trying to get our people to go to internet and cellular as that's more reliable than phone line so if you guys are doing self-monitoring you guys can set up emails and text messages and the alarm signal will not go to a central station if you're doing self-monitoring only because that's not the way that the system is programmed so you guys can choose and decide what you guys are looking for some people find that central station monitoring is better for them if they live in the city some other people that live in suburban areas find that you know the low the closest police station is 30 40 minutes away so they'd rather just get self-monitored text messages and take the um, action into their own hands which is not recommended we always recommend central station monitoring but we do offer both plans depending on what you guys plan to do if you guys have any more questions about the alarm systems how they work how they send out signals if you guys have questions about our monitoring plans feel free to email us at support at alarmgrid.com if you found the video helpful make sure you hit like underneath Subscribe to the YouTube channel and enable notifications so whenever we upload new videos, you guys get notified. I'm George, and I'll see you guys next time.